I think uh, Baba as well as me, some words about our respected languages, so Austrian for Baba and Luxembourgish for me, but the speaking styles are not the same. So for Luxembourgish, I am working on the prepared speaking styles, which is easier, and uh, Barbara, she will speak about spontaneous speech. I will uh, spend some minutes on all um, our language specificities with respect to automatic speech recognition, development and errors, because Luxembourgish is mainly an oral language and not so much a written language, and this raises um, some specific issues. And then I will rapidly present the ASR system and some results, and the error analysis will be limited to almost, almost nothing, because we are short in time. So Luxembourg, uh, most of you probably know the country, but it's, it's very small, and it is embedded in a multilingual context at the, at the boundary of the German and the Germanic and the Romans uh, regions. And we see this in the language, uh, in the spoken language in Luxembourg. There are about 500,000 inhabitants. Among these are 350,000 natives. Our native language is Luxembourgish, which is a, a Western Germanic uh, dialect or language, I, sh I should say. It's a po political issue. <laughs> and uh, the other practiced languages are uh, German and French and also English and other ones. Um, Luxembourg is <coughs> considered with respect to automatic processing as a less resolved language and uh, Luxembourg shares many features with the world's thousands of all languages which are very few documented. So these points are, it's mainly a known language as I already said. There is poor written standardization even though official standards exist and they are still evolving. But this is not the main reason. The main reason is because the standards are not taught at school. And why are the standards not taught at school? Because the language is, uh, there is a, a kernel of Luxembourgish, but very rich with German and, and French. And you need to master the other codes, the codes of German and French too, to learn the Luxembourgish. <laughs> so it's an, a complicated situation. We have also high dialectal variation. And um, of course, given the situation, frequent use of German and French. Uh, lexical items um, in the vocabulary and uh, German and French for writing. German and French is the, are the, main, the, uh, the main languages for writing. I will give you just um, a small example of Luxembourgish and as I anticipated all the problems I could have, not only with the display but also with the sound, I will read the sentence if I manage to see it. Sechs main présidents that mich mit am Lobe der Zeit der Bedriebe was. So that, this is the sentence in Luxembourgish and I put uh, the English uh, translation above and you see in blue the the, language, the words which are in German, in, uh, in Luxembourgish and also of course in German, and in red, words which come from, from French. You have the French translation on, on, the, on the right. And of course, there are small function words in Luxembourgish uh, which also occur in, in, uh, in German, in French and English, and this is not specific to, to Luxembourgish, this occurs in, in many languages with the very short items. But uh, the problem is that in Luxembourgish, uh, we are not limited to the Luxembourgish language, but we also have uh, French code switching or German. And so these uh, little items like uh, ET, which is ET in Luxembourgish, is E in, in French. So both pronunciation must be provided. <coughs> This is an example of a Luxembourgish written source. You can find on the on the web it's a weekly newspaper, and you can see that there are articles in different languages. You can find an article in, in Luxembourgish, I think, but uh, so you have articles in different languages. You can find Luxembourgish. Uh, if you are in a Luxembourgish document, you can find sentences with Luxembourgish, but also with other things. And even if you have words, you you have compounds, as in German which is very interesting for, for language, and you can compound with different uh, 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 origins. So, for example, Balkadon, these are uh, gifts uh, for elections, 
but you don't say, you say cadeau as in French, but not election cadeau, because the election is too long, so Val can only choose what is the most compact. So it's, it's really um, a mess. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the specificities, the specificities with respect to automatic speech recognition development and errors. So the first point is when you try to work on a word list for the pronunciation development, you have a large proportion of import words, most problematic French, because they are very uh, large in number, and German is very close to, or Luxembourg is very close to German, and it's not so problematic. But there are also many words of English, because English is a more recent uh, language of prestige in, in, Luxembourg, in Luxembourg. So these import words, they can be pronounced if they are used for a long time in Luxembourgish, in a Luxembourgish mode, so they are more or less assimilated within the Luxembourgish system. And I'll give an example here, bassin, the French word bassin. In Luxembourgish we say buzzing. And buzzing has the advantage of not having nasal vowels, because in the, in the core system we don't have nasal vowels. But as we have many imports, more recent imports, we, have, uh, we need to have nasal vowels for these, but the uh, older imports, they don't have nasal vowels. And uh, you see also the uh, phenomena of remission, and uh, we, we prefer voiced consonant to unvoiced as opposed to the to jaw. Yeah. Um, as I said before, the, the writing conventions are poorly stabilized. And there are some people who professionally, for example, for the um, parliament debates, they are professionals to, to write the parliament, to transcribe the parliament debates, and they master perfectly the Luxembourgish uh, writing rules, but they are almost alone in Luxembourg to do so. And, but now with the internet, many Luxembourgers write in Luxembourg on, on the internet, and this creates a very big variation. And here I show just the, the simple word, which is not an import, it's a Luxembourgish word, for a Saturday, we say Zamstisch, and uh, the, I made the graph of all the, all the variants in writing we found. Here's the list on the right. And you see the, the, the um, stressed uh, syllable is the first one. So Zamstisch, Zamst, the, the first syllable is rather stable, and then the unstressed syllable is, is up, uh, rather approximate. You can have Voice on voice consonant. The, the S and can switch to Schön. This is an original variant. And the, the, the vowel of the unstressed syllable is the timbre is not very clear. And then the end of the, the coda of the syllable can be uh, and can also be an end. Luxembourg, they like the N. They put ends. <laughs> anyway, but sometimes there is uh, there is no consonant can also appear, so it's very interesting. Uh, for the ASR experiments with this language, we decided to have a, a phonemic inventory, which is uh, a little bit a mix of different systems with uh, 56 symbols and uh, three additional symbols: silence, education, and words. And we have 31 vowels, not only for Luxembourgish vowels, but as I said before, also for nasals. But the specificity of the, the, the core Luxembourgish system is to have a, a large number of diphthongs. Are they all phonemes? I don't know, or just uh, other forms of the, the same one. We, we need to more, uh, do more investigations. We have a pronunciation dictionary of 200k words, and I'm still working on this because uh, the specificity, as I said, is when you see a lexical entry, you have first to decide what is it more French or is it more German to interpret the, the graphemes to know how they are pronounced. <coughs> we have managed to collect uh, huge numbers of data as well for speech, more than 1,000 hours. And for written material, we have about 50 million of raw data. But as I said before, this is multilingual and we have to filter out and uh, I think we, we, at the end, after filtering, we have a, 
um, 30 million of almost Luxembourgish like data, but of course Luxembourgish like is with other words in, from other languages inside. The acoustic models are, um, I will not enter into details, you can have a look. The acoustic features, PLT and MLT. And the ASR experiments we carried out, um, we used as tests 10 hours of uh, various radio shows. And we made the first set of experiments, as we had no uh, acoustic models for Luxembourgish. We used acoustic models from the major Western languages. This means uh, English, French, and German for us. And then um, we, we made another set of experiments with Luxembourgish models after having made unsupervised tra uh, transcription to get the Luxembourgish data to train these models. And then we tried to, to get progressive in more and more contexts by uh, decoding uh, automatically more and more Luxembourgish data. So the, the results, they are summarized here. Um, you, you see that the, uh, the y-axis is the work error rate and the curve is in two parts. One part with very high error rates, this com uh, corresponds to the, the, experiment, the first set of experiments with uh, a mismatch between the languages. And if you want to predict what language would be best for a Luxembourgish, is it French because there are so many French imports, is it German because it's a Germanic language, or is it English because we have so many diphthongs? Um, the uh, response is not uh, uh, so uh, direct, straightforward. But the results show that uh, the worst results are for French, then English, and then German. And we made a, a fourth experiment by pulling all the data together, and the results are more or less stable, but a little bit worse than German. And we, then we made um, uh, unsupervised transcription of the Luxembourgish data, and we showed the results for the Luxembourgish acoustic models. We have the first uh, results with 7,000 uh, context-dependent models, and the error rate is about 34%. And by, um, what I represent here with the circles is the, represents the volume of data for training our acoustic models. So with the same volume of data and increasing just the number of uh, context-dependent, we gain a little bit, but not so much. And then we increase the, number, the volume of data and uh, we, we gain a little bit more, and by increasing the more and more the data and the number of contexts, and also uh, improving the acoustic features, we go down to uh, about 25% error rate. But this is an, an error rate which is just comparing the output of the system to the reference transcription. As I said in the beginning of my talk, a word in the reference transcription, for example, the word Saturday, which you know, if it's written with the uh, third form of the list of 20 forms I showed you, and the system produces the first version, it will decide it's an error, although it's uh, not an error, but just a value. So um, typical error types in a, for ASR systems are homophones, um, or reasons for errors, overlapping speech, um, human production variants which were not in the pronunciation dictionary, or uh, not so often human uh, production errors. And in general, writing variants is not so important in, in results. But for Luxembourgish, this proportion of, of uh, variants becomes very, very important in the error rate. And I am still working on, on disentangling what is really an error and what is not an error. And your question before, if you have a complete homophone, a string, but on two words or one, is it an error or not? Especially as there are compound words and uh, the coverage of the 200k lexicon is not, not strong enough to, to take into account all these things. So uh, what we can learn from these days are errors for, for Luxembourgish is uh, first, the, the reality that uh, there is this uh, very important uh, factor of um, writing variants. And here I give some examples of um, errors. 
which are uh, actually no errors. <coughs> this one and here's oh. this is a Luxembourgish uh, form of already, which in German is showing and we will say shown. And as it's a short vowel, you have to put two consonants. That's the rule. But as um, the German orthography is much more known and it is shorter. We prefer to write this one despite the pronunciation, which would not be okay. Here is a confusion uh, between um, the Luxembourgish adapted um, writing of the French word chapter. And uh, there are many phenomena also of uh, word initial and word final schwa deletions. There are many examples of uh, final N. And I will not continue too long because Barbara will speak about the Austrian. I just wanted to say that we gain insights in the Luxembourgish phonological processes, including schwal emission reduction, mobile and voice and simulation. And there's ongoing changes in the phonemic inventory by merging uh, and Okay. Uh, so, uh, we've seen uh, <coughs> what uh, our errors can uh, tell us about Luxembourgish, so now we, now we go on to Austrian German. Uh, and uh, the main goal of uh, <coughs> these uh, experiments presented here is to, to use an ASR system and the errors that come out of that system as a tool to uh, investigate or to get an insight into uh, a language or a variety of a language that is not well documented, so where you don't know that much yet quantitatively about uh, the pronunciations that occur, etc. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm working on Austrian German. Um, there are hardly any pronunciation dictionaries, so there, there are German dictionaries, but uh, not for Austrian German. So the idea was okay, if I look at the ASR errors, I will find errors that tell me something about how to uh, go on with pronunciation modeling and at the end create the pronunciation. So in order to do so, I, you need an ASR system. If the, the one I, I build up is a very simple HDK-based system with the, I say, the standard setting and features and uh, using I say, well, the sun is that information, that's it for today. Um, maybe beforehand, um, some words to Austrian German. So if you look at written Austrian German, the main differences to German German are uh, of a lexical nature and then also grammatical differences. So tenses are built differently, they are used differently. The same thing is for cases and syntactic structures. Um, and if you look into red Austrian German, then there are some main differences into for the German German. Um, for instance, we don't make any distinction in uh, voice and voiceless closes and so forth. For ASR, well, they say, well, we just need a little bit of red speed from Austrians and, and the acoustic models will, will do the rest. And uh, so let's see whether that's true. So uh, I trained my little HDK ISR system on uh, speech from, from the bus corpus. It's a corpus uh, collected in Munich, covering red speech from all varieties of, of uh, German. And uh, well, if I then uh, use this train system on red speech, red from Austrians, um, then we get 95% correct. So I say, well, the thing works. Uh, I must say the sentences were uh, designed <coughs> so there are no lexical differences and supportive things. So the thing that this experiment reflects is simply we learn how to read in, so school works in Austria, let's say. Um, but then what happens if we go to spontaneous uh, Austrian German? And this is where the link is with Luxembourgish, because actual Austrian German only exists in the oral form, like 
because the, 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 the written language doesn't reflect the way how we speak. So what, what happens then? Uh, if we want to do so, we first of all need a corpus. Uh, and uh, so this year, I've collected speech from 38 speakers, um, male and female, uh, from, from the main Austrian cities. And because before there has not been any spontaneous speech material from Austrian Germany. So I've got in total 20 hours of free conversations between friends and colleagues, so they're very spontaneous. I guess, well, I, I have prepared some examples, but we'll skip that. And then of the same speakers, I've also recorded um, commands, spontaneous commands. So they get one picture presented, and they say one sentence with the picture. So that's somewhere in between free conversational speech and uh, live speech. So then uh, I tested the ASI system on, on this conversational speech of that corpus. And uh, while well, I got 28% were accuracy, so that's not error rates, that's accuracy. Uh, and here I must say on top of that, this is, I, I call them clean utterances, or you could also call them empty. Uh, there are only utterances which were not spoken in overlap, people were not laughing at the same time. Uh, th these are very interesting things, but I excluded <coughs> them for this experiment just in order to, to see or to, to get a clue about the pronunciation variation, not studying laughter in these things in this uh, study. Um, so in the next experiment, uh, I also trained uh, the HTK recognizer on conversational speech. And what you see then is <coughs> that, of course, uh, the word accuracies go up, also for the red speech part. So it, it also helps the system to improve in the red speech. Uh, and now the interesting part comes in, namely looking at the errors that the system makes now. And they all reflect uh, a lot of what is going on on the pronunciation level. Um, so one thing is I can use these ASR errors for spotting Austrian words. It's simply like others would call it OOV, or for me it's like words that need to be added to the dictionary. Um, then what can you learn from the substitutions? So from uh, so they they all. Uh, reflect underlying or the underlying pronunciations. For instance, um, the word sind, meaning are, we are, uh, is very often recognized as dan. Now, now you think, well, what is the system doing if it, it recognizes sind as dan? But the thing is that in, in Austrian German, uh, e is pronounced as a. So then you have sand, and then it, if it's then reduced, then it will be closer to them. Uh, or the word ja, meaning yes, we always, 100% always say yo, so it's confused before. So all these confusions, if you look at them, they... Oh, okay. I can turn the light on. No. <laughs> so there, there are... Uh, well, for me, they, they help me then to create a, a better presentation dictionary to derive rules from these errors that the system makes. Uh, another nice one is that nine, the, the most frequent confusion for nine is actually ya, yeah, because we don't say nine, we say na. And this is closer to ya. Yeah. And then, of course, we learn many things from deletions. Some of them are also uh, typical for spontaneous German, German, and spoken in Germany. Uh, but also yesterday, we've talked about that uh, the reductions that happen are language specific. So different kinds of, kinds of reductions happen in Austrian German than in German German. So for instance, one of the most frequent ones and cited in German, German is deletion at the end, like in und, and, and it's und, but in Austria it only happens if there is a, a, a de-initial word following, but for the rest it's never, uh, it's never And these kind of things 
you can find from looking at the arrows. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention, uh, it's also a useful tool to find uh, the, the, or to get a, yeah, to hint about how multiple expressions are uh, produced or uh, pronounced. And uh, the last one that I put here is uh, fast, du uh, schon, do you leave already? And as we saw on the previous slide, ah, it's uh, often pronounced as O, so fast will be pronounced as fast. And uh, if it's then reduced with the fast to schon, then uh, we get to geforscht. And that's the last thing I say, research is done. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Um, if we want to have an, an optimal uh, methodology in order not to 
had too much time. I think it started to, to fix the technology, which is time efficient and cost effective, and then only uh, spread it on the larger scale. Okay, thank you very much for the very 